Hi, my name is Eddie Cohen, and I make Cohen Cues. So I've been building cues for almost eight years. Uh, full time now I've been making cues for five years. Actually the way I got started is I'm a cue collector myself. And back around 2004 when I was getting a lot of cues quite often, I was getting new tips put on the both shafts each time I got a cue and I figured that in my best interest it was best for me to learn how to do my own tips. When I first started doing my own tips, uh, you know there's always that fear of failure um, I didn't always do everything correct the first time, but you just got, you get better with practice. I like to try to make a cue that plays as, as good as it looks, you know. Playability is my number one priority. I am, however, known for the look of my cues. The constant question I always get from customers is like, how do your cues hit? Which is somewhat difficult, because typically every time someone asks me that, they want me to compare it to someone else. I'd say the driving force behind my creativity is everything around me. A lot of my ring work I'll get inspired by, you know, just seeing patterns, architectural, any type of design, because sometimes just the, the flow of shapes and everything will just give me an idea or jumpstart something. Um, I might see something in a movie or a TV show and be like, oh, that shape sparked an idea for something. My shooting cue, which is laying on the table, the ring work is actually a pattern I, that's in the background of the computer I use for my CNC. Yeah, trial and error, I mean, working in the shops with Kent Davis and Ariel really did jumpstart me a lot because before I could really mess up stuff, they would tell me what not to do. I mean, nobody's perfect, obviously you're gonna make mistakes, so. The weirdest thing is it's like, you're making a cylinder. How many different ways can you make a cylinder? But everyone has their own technique or ways that they like to do it. Yeah, I'm excited about this year's Cue Maker Showcase because it'd be nice to meet fans of Cue Makers or if you're a collector or just a player. I play in a lot of tournaments, so it'd be nice to meet other players that are serious in the pool. If you're, it's your thing, you should come out, check out the tournament, check out the Cue Maker Showcase. Hi, my name is Kent Davis and I make KDQs and welcome to my shop. These are little tiny eyes. All this come off. The challenges I faced here in Southern California really was trying to obtain nicely figured woods. I overcame the obstacle in not being able to get them by developing a method where I could radial laminate forearms consistently make something that would be what I intended it to be and yet still use the most highly figured nicest qualities of wood that in many cases other people weren't trying to use for for cuning. Oh it's a beautiful color of yellowish orange. It's always good if somebody names you the Duke of Burl to have 50 pound chunks of burl. I started making cues <clears throat> with a friend of mine, Mike Montalvo, and uh, I decided to get a little more help with somebody in a little more depth, and that would be Ariel Carmelli. He was more than happy to share with me. He became a very, very good friend, and I've been independent probably for close to 11, 12 years. If someone asked me for something in particular, it's my goal to try and produce it. If I can determine what it is they're looking for, the experience and compatibility between different woods that go into the butt and how it's married to the shaft really are determined by the outcome. So there's no right or wrong answer. There's only what you want, what you like to play with, and what you don't. And if you can describe that to me, I feel like 
pretty confident that I can perform and, and make it happen. I wanted to make sure that I could send out a very, very sincere thank you to everyone who's helped me in from the smallest little things to the biggest and huge favors and all in all, everything that I do, it belongs to you and thank you. Hi, my name is Ariel Carmelli and I make Ariel Carmelli custom cues. I started doing repair work at Best Billiards in Santa Ana in 1991. Probably about six months after that, we started attempting to build cues and had the first one finished around mid-92. The guy that owned Best Billiards was actually interested in seeing why the cues play differently because everybody assumes it's a piece of wood up front, a handle, a piece of wood in the back, and a maple shaft. How can they all play so different? One of the guys that worked there with me a few years later had x-rays that confirmed what we thought that there's many different ways to put a cue together, and he was interested in finding out how that happened. So he spent a considerable, a considerable amount of money on uh, some of the mid-level cue makers from back then, and we literally cut them apart to see how they were put together. think there's a, a lot of cue makers out there but there's really not there are some small guys who do repairs and occasionally make cues but as far as people who make cues for a living there's probably less than 200 of us so 200 guys trying to supply even 1 million people it's just not gonna happen so Competition really isn't a problem. This is the kind of cocoa bowl that we try and get. This is very hard to get because anybody who you call up and ask you to send cocoa bolo to you, they're not going to send you this because they can put it up in their shop and get premium for it. This is landscape cocoa bowl. And there's another type of grain cocoa ball called crotch. This is usually down at the bottom of the tree by the roots, just above the ground, just below the ground. There is no straight grain here. It's all going sideways. And then we have got another really nice piece of fiddleback for the handle. If you look at the forearm, you can see it's just twisting. And that's what you usually do. This, I, if I could get all the time, I would. I can get closer to getting that more often. But this grain, you know, cocoa bolo is typically a vertical grain. So if you were to hold the cue like this, the grain should be going this way. This is all going sideways. This is typically what cocoa bolo looks like. Mm -hmm. Which one would you rather own? If you've never made it out to any of the bigger tournaments like the West Coast Swing, you should probably come out and check it out. Get to see some new pool cues, get to see the pros up close and personal. You know, you're not in a bleacher somewhere 30 feet away from the action, you're five feet away from it. And you can actually talk to them. All any cue maker is gonna have at the end of the day is the product you put out. All you got is the product you put out and your name is on it. So at the end of our lives, all we have is our name. And if you did a good enough job, people will remember your names for the right reason. And if you did a bad job, they'll remember it for the wrong reason. Doesn't matter how much money you have, how many toys you got. If you want people to rem remember you, which will be your legacy, do the job right. Because no one can ever take that away from you, living or dead. Hey, this is Tony Kondarian, CEO of Tiger Products in Burbank, California, USA. I 
loved billiards. I played pool in the uh, early 80s and it was always recreational. You know, I always had fun, never thought of it as a business. But the fact to do something, to do something well and do something different that was close to my heart, uh, yeah, you know, it led us to maybe about three years of experimentation before uh, you guys heard of Tiger Tips. Once you're in queues, you always try to work on new designs, new concepts. You know, we've already done, uh, which to me is the, the, the proud moment. And probably to this day, I think uh, out of all the queues, and we have from, uh, you know, $450 range to going all the way to 3000 our X2 series is our kind of a signature Tiger signature line that uh, to this day I'm very proud because uh, you want to do something, you want to put your signature in an industry when you're trying something new and different in hopes people get it, people understand, but the goal, whether it's a cue, whether it's a shaft, whether it's any accessory, as far as Tiger and everything else about the project is quality. Why is Tiger special or Tiger Q special? Why are we different from any other brand in the world today? Because we integrate technology with craftsmanship. And by saying that, every part of the Tiger Q, whether it's external or internal, is made at Tiger. Every part is well crafted by guys who are proud what they do some uh, is done on a lathe some will be done by hand every part everything is well put together not creating or having to think how many are we going to make is by how well we are going to make and the only difference with us and uh, custom guys basically we just like to design our own cues and make me make more than one however it's not production numbers it's not made to be out there in large numbers it's just made to play well and to present in perfect condition to our consumers tiger is very pleased and excited to be part of west coast cue maker showcase this year so please come and see us come and see all of the fellow cue makers that will be there you'll see a lot of great cues uh, You'll see a great tournament, some of the best players will be there, so definitely be part of it because it's going to be very exciting. See you there!